Hello, in this video we're going to look at using named sets within a pivot table. So here's my scenario. I've got a little bit of a database here that gives me basically budget values for various train departments within these areas, um, actual expenditure and variance. Now variance is just obviously budget minus actual. So it goes over, uh, the data kind of covers several years, 2013, and it even includes 2017. Now, at the time of recording, we're in 2016. So these figures here are budgets, which are useful, but these variance calculations are pretty nonsensical because we don't have any actual expenditure in column F. And that's actually where the name sets will become quite useful. So let's go forward and create our pivot table so probably what i would do first of all is to convert this data to an excel table so Control t is a very quick way of doing that Control t and that will open up my little create table dialog box where is the data for your table well it's that range there a1 to g 15841 my table has headers, that's ticked, click on OK. And give the table the name. Let's call it budget data. And press enter to confirm. So I'm now ready to create my pivot table. So I'm going to click into the table, go to insert pivot table. And it's confirming my table as its data source. And I'm going to create the pivot table on existing worksheet. Uh, in location, well, let's put it up there in I1. Now, to use name sets, you have to tick this little option here, add this data to the data model. If you're not seeing that option within your version of Excel, then I'm afraid name sets won't actually work for you. They'll actually be grayed out as an option. That's because you have to have the data model installed for this to work. Now the data model is power, part of Power Pivot. If you're in Excel 2010, you could add the Power Pivot add-in to your version, to your Excel, and this data model option will become uh, available to you. In Excel 2013, if you're not seeing that as an option, then you've got the wrong version, I'm afraid, of Excel 2013 for that to work. I'm in Excel 2016, and this is available by default. So anyway, assuming that you have that, uh, that option available to you, we'll carry on with this tutorial. So I click on OK. And then I can start creating my pivot table. So I am going to want to explore kind of total budget uh, and variance across different departments. So I'm going to tick budget. That will go into rows. And I also want to have um, budget and variance in my values area. And I want to kind of explore that across the different years. So I'm going to put years into columns. So what you can see is, well, let's uh, make this slightly easier to read. I'm just going to rename these column headings. Let's call that one budget. Um, and that one variance. And let's just do a little bit of column rewidening. Um, so total variance I don't want there. So let's take that off. Let's go to design, grand totals on for columns only. And what we can see is that we now have budget and variance for the different years. But the problem is, is that we don't want the variance figures to show for 2017 because these are nonsensical. They're exactly the same as the budget values. Now, if I remove variance from the pivot table, it's obviously going to remove it from each of the years. So that's not going to work for me. So this is where sets will become quite useful. What I'm going to do is go up to my Analyze tab on my ribbon. You might say Options for you in older versions. I'm going to go to Fields, Items and Sets. 
and I can create sets based on row items. Quite useful if we wanted to maybe create sets for these items down the side here, or I can create sets based on column items. Well, that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to click on this and let's give the set a name. So let's call it budget. And here I can see I've got 2013 budget, 2013 variance, 2014 budget, 2014 variance, and so on and so forth. So I want all of these bar this one here, 2017 variance. So what I can do is delete it and click on OK. So that then gives me what appears to be another field within the pivot tables field list. And that's been automatically put into the columns area because I created um, a set for column items. And now if I look at my pivot table, I'm going to scroll across a little bit, you can see that it now excludes some of variants for the um, 2017 data. It's slightly annoying, well it's done that for us, which is great, it's slightly annoying that it's renamed all of my headings. If you've also, you know, formatted your numbers here, uh, you may find that when you employ a set, it will take the formatting off. So it's worth leaving all of these little changes till after you've created your set. Um, if you want to manage your sets or delete your sets, just go up to Field Items here, Manage Sets. And here you can either edit the set, which will take you back in there, or you can delete the set, which will get rid of it entirely from your pivot table. So just a bit of naming up here, need a bit of formatting in the normal way once you've created the set, and then you're done.